Before we can really understand the way tectonic plates interact, we need to understand some of the basic properties of the two different types of crust, ocean crust and continental crust. Now remember that the crust is the uppermost rigid, solid, and cold part of the lithosphere, which is the uppermost part of the geosphere. Okay, so let's start with the ocean crust first. Ocean crust is composed of completely different rocks than the continental crust. It's not like some crust just happens to have an ocean on top of it and some doesn't. Okay, so ocean crust is a very different kind of rock that forms in a different way than continental crust forms. Ocean crust is mafic. Now remember, that means that it's made up of minerals with more metals in them like iron and magnesium. Okay, that means that all the crust is basalt on top and gabbro at depth. Now all of that mafic material stays pretty thin. As we will see a little bit later, ocean crust doesn't really crumple up together too much at their tectonic boundaries. And when ocean crust is form, it's formed, it is igneous and runny, so it spreads out. It's also cold and pretty dense. Okay, so mafic rocks lose their heat relatively quickly compared to more felsic rocks. So that's our ocean crust. It's thin, dense, cold, mafic. The other kind of crust is continental crust. This is a photo of a rock form formation called the Old Man of Store on the Scottish Isle of Skye, and I really wish I'd taken this picture. This is one of the places on my bucket list. Okay, sorry for the tangent, back to continental crust. This is the crust that we landlubbers are most familiar with, but you may not be familiar with its physical properties. Continental crust is made up of lots of different kinds of rocks and sediments, but by and large, the stuff under our feet is granite, which has a lot of silicate minerals in it. And specifically, silicate minerals um, that are mostly silica and lighter elements like potassium and sodium. And because all of this continental crust um, has these lighter elements in them, they also tend to be pretty um, buoyant. They're a lot less dense than ocean crust. Okay, it's also thick because as we'll see later in this module, it doesn't subduct. It just crumples and folds and bends and gets thicker and thicker until it starts eroding. So let's look at that graphic of the ocean and continental crust again. You can see the thick, light-colored, silica-rich continental crust and the thin, dark, mafic ocean crust. Both of these are parts of the lithosphere, but they are compositionally very different and, as we will see, behave differently tectonically.